Okay. Uh, Nitin, I guess we can start. Slides are visible. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Nitin, a part of product management team here in Mankind, and I would like to welcome all of you for today's evening program on behalf of Mankind family. Uh, for today's session, I would like to welcome all of uh, you, and I would like to welcome our prestigious speaker for the evening, Ms. Shilpa Joshi. She is director of Mumbai Diet and Healthcare Center, and also would like to welcome Dr. Prashant. Uh, Dr. Prashant will be the moderator for our today evening's program. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Before I hand over this session to Doctor, I would like to give a brief introduction about the company. So, by 2020, mankind has completed its 25 years of journey here in mankind. Our vision is to here in mankind. Our vision is to become the most admired Indian pharmaceutical company. Mankind is ranked one prescription wise and ranked four value wise. Mankind presence in almost all the areas. Mankind has strong presence in almost thirty four countries and having nineteen world class US FDA, WHO, GMP certified plants. Here in mankind, we committed to improve quality of life with three pillars of serving life, that is affordability, reach, and quality. Mankind having strong presence across the therapies area. So we are well representative ourselves almost in all the general and therapeutic classes with leadership in many. We have our own R&D centers backed up with more than 350 scientists. During the COVID era, mankind has during the COVID era, mankind has helping its employees, doctors, patients, and numerous way committed to its vision of serving life. Our endeavor is just to partner with SCP in order to improve the healthcare in India. With this, I would like to hand over this session to Dr. Prashant so he can start. Dr. Prashant, over to you. Thank you, Nitin, and uh, welcome everyone in this scientific session. So here we are, uh, we are already dealing with the situation where COVID-19 is prevailing. And for to prevent this COVID-19, uh, our internal immunity plays very important role. And to improve that immunity, of course, our diet and nutrition plays a very important role at the end. And to discuss that, we have very eminent speaker with us, Shilpa Joshi ma'am. Nathan, can you move slides, please? Nathan, next slide, please. Uh, Nathan? So, Shilpa Joshi ma'am is the director of Mumbai Diet and Healthcare Center. She is a practicing dietitian and a well-known diabetes educator. She is vice president of Indian Dietetic Association currently. She is honorary secretary, All India Association of Advancing Research in Obesity. She is master trainer for diabetes conversation maths also. She, has, she is course director for National Diabetes Educators Program and train more than 3,000 diabetes educators in the span. She has presented at various national and international meetings, including American Diabetes Association, International Diabetes Federation, and International Confederation of Dietitians. She has been runner-up recipient of 
Wim Feimer and Guggenheim's International Essay Award 2017 for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetic Foundation on Malnutrition. So I welcome again Shilpa Joshi, ma'am, and hand over the session to the ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Agrawal. Uh, if you stop sharing the screen, I can uh, uh, share. I did, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, let me just share my slides. I hope slides are visible. Yes, ma'am, slides are visible. Okay. So, good evening, everybody. At the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Agrawal for having uh, introducing me so graciously. And I would also like to thank uh, Mankind Pharma, more specifically, Mr. Sandeep Mitra, for having invited me here for this program. So I am going to be speaking on maintaining immunity through nutrition. My dear friends, for last six months, we have all been holed up. We are seeing patients in a very, very uh, difficult time of pandemic where we actually are dependent on our immunity for, uh, you know, uh, uh, for uh, immunity to protect us. And we all know there is a very famous saying that the army does not march on empty stomachs or rather army marches on stomach and hence our army, that is our immune cells are actually marching on the nutrition that we consume. And this is what I'm going to be speaking to you. So we all know to this August audience, I don't need to talk about what is immunity. It is ability of an organism to resist a particular infection or toxin by specific action of antibodies or sensitized white blood cells. So we have two kinds of immunity, humoral, which secretes antibodies and cell mediated which uh, is the sensitized B cell. <coughs> so the overview of my talk would be factors which impact immunity, nutrients that are important in immune function, WHO advice, nutrition advice for adults during COVID. I'm also going to be dwelling a little bit on Ayush recommendations for COVID and I'm going to be concluding. So we know that right now we are really, we are just at the end of the rainy season and we are just getting into October heat but we know we have been lashed, we have been lashed by various organisms, more specifically by COVID virus, all through last six months, and whereby we are having various layers of immunity to protect us, whether it is skin, it is mucosal immunity. There are other enzymes like lysozymes within our white blood cells. There are there is a, a function of phagocytosis. There are immunoglobulins, there is also cell-mediated immunity. There are dissolved immune system, uh, immune uh, substances like the complement system and the interferon system. And remember, all of these are actually helping us against the microorganism and parasites which are there. But right now, let's more dwell on microorganisms, more specifically viruses. And we know that various functions, actually, various things actually impact immune function, more specific age related, <coughs> where we are seeing older adults. And we always talk that COVID actually impacts older adults much more than younger hormones, wherein we are seeing that for people with diabetes or individuals with diabetes really do not do well. And of, of course, other things like exercise, stress. So there is a lot of stress and vaccine is nowhere in the picture. So we know that these all factors, in fact, obesity has come out to be one of the most important factor which impacts the COVID prognosis. So what are the factors impacting immunity? Modern lifestyle, that is reduced exposure to organisms, increased exposure to pollutants, heightened level of stress, westernized diets, and host of other variables are likely to contribute to immune dysfunction. And when we typically talk about westernized diet, typically everybody thinks that it is um, uh, pizzas and burgers and etc. But that is not what Western diet is. Western diet is characterized by high intake of saturated fat and, and omega-6 fat. So what is saturated fat in India? Ghee, butter, yeah, omega-6 fat, sunflower oil, safflower oil, etc. Reduced omega-3 fat, less consumption of fish, less consumption of nuts, overuse of salt and too much of refined sugar. So my question to you, all of you is, are these not Indian diets that we eat today? Of course they are. You don't have to be eating pizzas and burgers 
to call your diet as a westernized diet. So this is all part of westernized diet. Recipes are very Indian. There are pakoras and samosas and sabjiyas and bread pakoras and bhoklas, but ultimately their profile is all western in nature, whether it is meatized or whether it is other desserts. So we have seen a lot of impact of obesity in COVID and we are seeing that people who have higher BMI actually are not doing well in COVID. So there are two, malnutrition is described two ways by WHO. Malnutrition is underweight as well as overweight. So what is underweight? Deficiency in total calories or proteins severely reduces immune ability to respond, okay? White blood cells and other factors of immunity are themselves proteins and thus infection during starvation can lead to production of these at the expense of proteins from the blood and from the tissue. So there is tissue catabolism if somebody is underweight. But with overweight and obesity, fat itself releases inflammatory substances like interleukin-6 and we have seen as these act signals act as false alarm and bring down body's responsiveness to them, for acute infection, there is silencing of warning system because our immune system is always very, very alert and it gets silenced in presence of these false alarms. Now, there are some dietary components which I'm going to be talking to you about besides micronutrients, which are very, very important. So the first thing I'm talking about is sugar. And when I mean sugar, I also mean jaggery. It is not that jaggery is better than sugar. What does sugar, jaggery or honey do? Processed simple sugar reduce white cell phagocytosis and possibly increase the inflammatory cytokine markers in the blood. Salt, whether it is white salt, senda namak, kala namak, pink namak, it doesn't matter. High salt intake in the diet might increase interleukin-17 mediated inflammation that could worsen autoimmunity and other problems. Then there are saturated fats like ghee, butter, coconut oil and red meat. One of the potential harmful effects of fat is enhancement of prostaglandin system as it feeds into the arachidonic, as arachidonic and prostaglandin E2 pathway. We all know prostaglandin E2 are pro-inflammatory, increasing interleukin-17 production, macrophage activation, among other pathways. Dietary fats alter lipid membranes of the immune cell and disrupting the immune function. We know omega-3 fat actually gives, because they have a lot of double bonds, they give a lot of movement to the uh, uh, cell membrane and therefore uh, functions, immune functions like phagocytosis will happen far better when the membranes are filled with omega-3 fatty acid because saturated fat have a straight rigid structure. The cell membrane is not able to move enough during phagocytosis and the function gets impaired. So this is a diagrammatic overview and you will see that gut inflammation because of, you know, various dietary factors like red meat, yeah, less of um, fruit and vegetable intake, more of salt intake, more of omega-6 fat, more of saturated fat, even artificial sweeteners and sugar causes gut dysbiosis. And this leads to systemic inflammation. It also leads to something called as leaky gut, where there is lipopolysaccharides in the system which increases susceptibility to infections and even cancers. And what can protect us against it is only omega-3 fats and high intake of phytonutrients. So these are factors which are responsible for immunity. There are proteins, in short, amino acids, and there are a plethora of vitamins and minerals, which are all very, very important for immunity. So can I boost my immune system to try it? Of course, you can boost your immune system through diet, but there is no specific food or supplement that will prevent you from catching COVID. Good hygiene practices remains the best way of avoiding infection. Today, uh, uh, this has come from a European paper. So European food safety authorities have not authorized any claim for food or component of food in United Kingdom to label as protect from infection. There are many, many nutrients that are involved in normal functioning of immune system. So we would encourage maintaining healthy balanced diet in order to support immune function. One cannot recommend one food over another, but instead encourage eating a variety of foods to maintain a balanced diet and thereby enhancing nutritional diversity and through it enhancing immunity. So when I talk about nutrients, the first nutrient that is important to us is carbohydrate. Remember, it is the fuel for the body. 
it is found in almost all plant based food so whatever indians eat is carbohydrate it is present in blood in form of glucose in certain amount and it is a very important source of energy complex carbohydrates are found in not only but not starches <coughs> are found in fruits vegetables and then these uh, foods actually appear to reduce inflammation in our body and hence consumption of fruits and vegetables is very important and when you mean vegetables you just don't mean one or two but you mean vegetables of all colors and fruits of all kinds to be protective of, of, or or to be anti inflammatory in nature the second and most important nutrient for immunity is proteins proteins form a framework of body's defense system enzymes that control body functions and even some hormones especially for example hormone like insulin is a protein many immune mechanisms rely on production of active protein compounds or in cell replication in protein deficiency functions of immune system are decreased and latest studies show that protein metabolism actually plays a important role in formation of natural and acquired immunity against infection then there are fats and though fats are touted as bad foods actually fats are very very important even in immunity so fats are important energy sources 1 gram of fat actually provides twice as much calorie as protein and carbohydrate and hence they are touted as bad food but remember fatty acids are most powerful modulators of immune response diets containing high amount of fat can also decrease cellular inflammatory activity and immune response fat takes act, uh, fat take an active role in some of the biological functions such as absorption of fat soluble vitamins now let's these were macronutrients now from macronutrients let's move to micronutrients so micronutrients are involved in self protection of immune cells so remember micronutrients are exactly the umbrella that immune cells themselves need for, you know to protect themselves against viruses antioxidant mechanism of vitamin c zinc iron magnesium copper and selenium inhibit reactions of vitamin d vitamin b6 and vitamin e elimination of spent cell via apoptosis and clearance limiting tissue damage and example vitamin c and a variety of macronutrients at all stages of immune cell growth and proliferation that is lymphocyte proliferation differentiation and function so which are the uh, micronutrients that are integral to immune function some of the micronutrients such as a d e c and zinc are required to ensure structural integrity and functional integrity of external and internal surfaces uh, of the body uh, which form physical and chemical barriers that represent a first line of defense against invading pathogen cell mediated uh, cell mediated process of innate immunity such as cell proliferation growth of cell or growth of cell differentiation or functional movement and ability to mount an oxidative burst rely on adequate amount of vitamin a d c b6 b12 folate iron zinc copper selenium and magnesium so remember they are very very important and they are integral to the immune function as described now we let's go vitamin by vitamin so vitamin a is also called as anti infective vitamin and vitamin a deficiency increases susceptibility to pathogens in mucosal epithelium especially that of eye respiratory tract and gi tract vitamin a offers some protection against complication of life threatening infection form of vitamin a is retinol lycopene beta carotene lutein and like uh, and lycopene so what are the sources besides coming from non vegetarian sources as retinol itself the vegetarian sources where you will get lycopene beta carotene lutein are tomatoes green leafy vegetables papaya and non vegetarian food then there are plethora of vitamin b and you know vitamin b is widely distributed in nature and within the body about 100 reactions take place you know a catalyst is vitamin b so if you just look at a krebs cycle or a glycolysis you will see that at every step there are couple of vitamins which are coenzymes or cofactors in as a shot of vitamin b may weaken host immune response they should be supplemented to virus infected patients to enhance their immune system and we know the sources of vitamin b are fruits vegetables pulses and cereal 
Vitamin B12 is the only vitamin B which is present only in non-vegetarian food. And when I mean non-vegetarian, I don't only mean meat. It is present also in dairy. So food of animal origin. And hence, vegetarian, vegetarian should speak to their healthcare provider about supplementing it. Vitamin C, I think this is something which I'm going to dwell upon a lot. Vitamin C supports immune function and it protects against infections which are caused by coronavirus. Vitamin C increases resistance of chick embryo tracheal organ cultures to avian coronavirus infection. Vitamin C may also function as a weak antihistaminic agent to provide relief from flu-like symptoms such as sneezing, running nose, stuffy nose, or swollen sinuses. And where is vitamin C present? I think this is again something which is known all sour fruits and vegetables. The richest source in the world of vitamin C is Aula, and Aula is very, very native to India. So it can be Aula, lemon, tomatoes, oranges, sweet lime, and a lot of green leafy vegetables. So now you will see that vitamin C is a cofactor for family of biosynthetic and gene regulatory monooxygenase and dioxygenase system. These enzymes are involved in synthesis of collagen, carnitine, and catecholamine hormones. These systems also hydroxylate transcription factors and methylate, methyl, methylate DNA and histone and thus play a role in gene transcription and epigenetic regulation. So remember, vitamin C is not only involved in enzyme synthesis, but it is actually working in the process of methylation of DNA and histone production. And therefore, even genetically, it is very, very important to consume vitamin C. So you will see vitamin C absorption, and these are various cycles which take place within the cell membrane. So what are the role of vitamin C in immune defense? Epithelial barrier. So we all know the famous role of vitamin C in collagen synthesis and stabilization. It also, it's a very, very powerful antioxidant, antioxidant. So it protects against reactive oxygen species induced damage. It enhances uh, keratocyte differentiation and lipid synthesis. It enhances fibroblast proliferation and migration and shortens the time to wound healing. So we know in wound healing, vitamin C is of prime importance. Then we go to phagocytic functions, again, which is very, very important. It acts as an antioxidant and an electron donor. It enhances the motility and chemotaxis of the phagocytic cells. It enhances phagocytosis and reactive oxygen species generation, which enhance the microbial killing, facilitates apoptosis and clearance, and decreases necrosis uh, in the body. Then within the B cell and T cell, so within the humoral and cell mediated immunity, it enhances cell differentiation, cell proliferation, and therefore also enhances antibody production. And it also mediates inflammatory mediators like cytokine production. And it, like I said, it decreases histamine level. So this is what vitamin C can do. It can function at various levels on so neutrophilic uptake neutrophilic migration, chemotaxis, phagocytic activity, etc. In macrophages, you will see macrophage activation and clearance is done by vitamin C. It's, it's helped by vitamin C. Natural killer cell generation and natural killer cells are very, very important, especially as antigen presenting cells. Then there is B lymphocytes and especially production of antibodies like IgM initially in the infection and IgG later and IgA and in T, T lymphocytes also it is very, very important. So therefore, these are all the functions of it and also there is function in soluble proteins. So this was the function of vitamin C and therefore we find, I do not have to tell this to the August audience who is listening this, that we are supplementing vitamin C as a preventive modality for COVID or coronavirus. Vitamin D. Vitamin D stimulates maturation of many cells, including immune cells. Vitamin D metabolism in macrophages is linked to pathogen, that is bacteria or virus recognition. It's very, very important role and thus making it an integral part of the immune response. Vitamin D also modulates adaptive immune response and acts as a key intermediate in crosstalk between various immune cells. So say an antigen presenting cell and a T cell and a B cell it is doing the crosstalk. High number of healthy adults have been reported to have low levels of vitamin D 
mostly at the end of the winter season because this is a European journal. But in India, we see there is a rampant amount of vitamin D deficiency. COVID was first identified in winters of 2019, more specifically November and December of 2019, and mostly affected middle-aged to elderly people. Virus-infected people did have insufficient vitamin D levels. So vitamin D, TB, and other infections. Vitamin D deficiency is a risk factor for other infections also like TB, and sources of vitamin D were identified as treatments for, vitamin, uh, for um, uh, TB. Vitamin D boosts the ability of macrophages to kill mycobacterium tuberculosis via vitamin D catherinine pathway. Supplementation of humans with vitamin D has shown mixed results and future randomized placebo controlled trials need to be appropriated, considered for as dose escalation and frequency and target of severely deficient population like that living in India. Vitamin D deficiency has been correlated with increased respiratory tract infections more specifically influenza and also bacterial vaginosis. Cause and effects are not known. And here you will find that, you know, we get vitamin D from either from diet. Now in India, dietary sources of vitamin D are again sources of animal origin. And more specifically, you will find vitamin D being a rich source in organ meats like liver or brain, etc. Now if offal or organ meats are not eaten, then there is very little vitamin D otherwise found in the food. There is some amount of vitamin D which is added uh, in milk, etc., which is, you know, supplemented in milk uh, or fortified. We have fortified vitamin D fortified milk also available, but you find that repeated heating and cooling cycles of the milk that happen in our kitchen actually destroys the fortified vitamin D. So therefore, vitamin D3 is acquired either through diet or is synthesized in skin hydroxylated in liver and the main uh, to uh, D3, and that is the main circulating form of vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is then hydroxylated in kidney by cytochrome P450. The physiologically active metabolite, when it reaches the blood, has multiple systemic effect, especially in the cells of immune system, including macrophages, dendritic cells, T and B cells expression, etc., and also vitamin D3 acts on immune cells in an autocrine and a paracrine manner by binding it to vitamin D receptors. And therefore vitamin D is very important. So either it is solar or it is dietary, it goes and it is made into an active form in the kidney and from where it acts over to all the immune cells. And these are the mechanisms of vitamin D in immune modulation. So if they work on macrophages and monocytes, increasing interleukin-1, poly, uh, increasing their proliferation, increasing catherine, and increasing VDR. In dendritic cell, it, in, it increases their maturation, represents a re representation of major histocompatibility class 2, CD4, CD40 and CD80 cells, decreases interleukin-12, and increases interleukin-10. Also, it works on memory T cells, which give us long-term memory against infection, and B cell, where it is, uh, decree, uh, increasing um, um, production of antibodies. Now, this is a recent paper clip where they have shown that there is a link between COVID vitamin D and it has shown data from 20 countries. Natural dietary sources of vitamin D is only non-vegetarian, only like I told you, fortified vitamin D. With lockdown, the biggest problem is whatever little vitamin D our skin was making because of exposure to sunlight is minimized. Also remember, because of covering our face with a mask and other things, exposed area to the sun is also minimized. Therefore, it is recommended that you be speak to our healthcare provider for vitamin D intake. Vitamin E. Vitamin E also plays an important role in reducing oxidative stress through binding through free radicals and antioxidants. It enhances interleukin-2 production and it decreases production of PGE2. So dietary sources of vitamin E are nuts, oil seeds and germinating pulses. Then there are other nutrients like selenium, which again have shown to cause oxidative stress in host and alter viral genome so that normally benign or mildly pathogenic virus becomes highly virulent in the deficient host under oxidative stress. Deficiency of selenium also induces not only impairment of immune function, but also rapid mutation of benign virus variants of RNA viruses to virulence. And where are you getting selenium? Selenium is also present widely in nature. 
you are getting it from whole grains and therefore consumption of whole grain nuts milk curd and uh, is very important if you are non vegetarian you can consume non vegetarian food now zinc is one of the nutrients that has caught on everybody's attention zinc deficiency results in dysfunction of both humoral and cell mediated immunity and increases a lot of susceptibility to infection increasing the concentration of intracellular zinc with zinc ionophores like pyrethrin can effectively impair replication of variety of rna viruses the combination of zinc at a low concentration inhibits replication of virus so therefore these are all functions of zinc macrophage activity is affected by zinc phagocytosis also gets affected by zinc zinc adversely affects the growth and function of t and b cell and ability of zinc to function as a an antioxidant and stabilize membranes suggests that it has a role in prevention of free radical induced injury during the process of inflammation and therefore you will see that this is a adaptive immunity um, uh, you know where you are seeing that uh, innate immunity gets impacted if there is less of zinc you will see that there is decreased cytotoxicity there is decreased lytic activity there is decreased antibody production and in presence of zinc you find that your innate immunity works much better your uh, um, uh, um, mononuclear cells have a chemotaxis they can attract monocytes etc which does not happen when there is decreased amount of zinc in the system so therefore zinc becomes as a gatekeeper of immune function so there are three uh, uh, things which can happen there can be zinc deficiency there can be zinc homeostasis and there can be zinc excess remember both the ends whether it is a, a deficiency or whether it is excess both are not good because deficiency will lead to increase overproduction of pro inflammatory cytokines and reactive mediators and zinc excess can also lead to suppression of t and b cell response and therefore we want something called a zinc homeostasis where there are balanced immune cell number and functions and balance between tolerance and defense mechanism and why is zinc supplementation important because zinc is present in nuts oil seeds pulses and non vegetarian food and lot of times you find that people tend not to eat this either for economic reasons that they are expensive or sometimes they think that nuts and oil seeds have too much fat in them and they will gain weight and also we know that pulses are very expensive so people tend to avoid these kinds of food and therefore their zinc requirement is never met with and therefore zinc supplementation becomes very very important if you talk to any indian who is vegetarian he will tell you he eats dal once a day nobody is eating dal two times a day to supplement or meet up with the zinc uh, uh, demands so zinc is essential for immunity building because it is required for proper functioning of immune system zinc zinc deficiency can result decrease resistance against infectious disease it zinc can improve immune function in deficient population when supplemented and zinc is also an anti inflammatory agent and plays a role in oxidative stress then we have the other nutrient which is iron again we find that there is increased amount of iron deficiency especially among women and among women of reproductive age in india and again iron is a very very important nutrient iron is required both for host and pathogen and iron deficiency can impair host immunity while iron overload can cause oxidative stress to propagate harmful viral mutation so therefore consumption of iron rich foods is also very important in fighting infection now what is the importance of micronutrient supplementation isn't our diet enough do we really need to supplement uh, micronutrients an inadequate intake of micronutrient at any stage of life affects various functions within the immune system manifesting in decreased resistance to infection and increase in severity of symptoms considering the importance of micronutrients in immunity and the fact that many people of all ages have single or multiple micronutrient deficiency that can have detrimental effect on immunological function the rational for micronutrient supplementation to restore the concentration and recommended level especially after infection and to support immune system and maintenance is required to avoid any unwanted side effects 
it is of course important to ensure that supplementation does not exceed the upper tolerable limit but remember there is no single biomarker that exists that accurately reflects the effect of supplementation on immune response clinical outcomes are instead used to determine effectiveness of the supplementation because this is something that a patients might be asking that if i take this can you assure me that you know i have it enough in my system and there are no tests to show this so immunity can be maintained by nutritional deficiency of certain macro and micronutrient can disturb immunity adequate and regular supply of essential vitamins and minerals is required to maintain this immunity and although different vitamin and minerals have their individual role in increasing immunity or uh, increasing our resistance against infection and these vitamins also have synergistic role so here it is established that synergistic action it's a recent paper it's a review article from a recent journal so if you look at it it's a 2017 publication which establishes synergistic action of vitamin c vitamin d and zinc in increasing immunity by maintaining all three levels of immune function and reducing the risk of infection so when they are given together also they synergistically act with each other enhancing immunity also even in complementary uh, in complementary and alternative medicine immune system is an says that immune system is an intricate network organized in three the uh, three main interactive cluster that is physical barrier innate and adaptive immunity there are three nutrients that has been specified um, uh, on the substantial health claims are related to vitamin d vitamin c zinc for normal functioning of immune system and even british medical journal recently on prevention of health uh, prevention and health said that in one recent review identified that there are an array of micronutrients that are required to meet complex needs of immune system which include vitamin a b e uh, c b6 b12 folate copper zinc selenium with many of these having potential synergistic effect of the evidence however it was concluded that largest body of evidence is related to immune function is existing with synergistic action of vitamin c vitamin d and vitamin z uh, and zinc so you will see that there are many many trials there are nine randomized control trials with greater than 5000 patients that daily high strength of vitamin c reduces common colds fever and chest pain in meta analysis of 30 trials it has been shown that reduction of common cold incidence by 8% with supplementation of vitamin c 500 mg of vitamin c provides maximum health benefits and strengthens the physical barriers Uh, and cochrane review of about 29 randomized controlled trials with greater than 11000 patients show that vitamin c reduces incidence and severity of common cold same way vitamin d with a cellular effect again randomized controlled trials with greater than 6000 patients show that supplementation of vitamin d actually significantly reduces respiratory tract infection 11 placebo controlled studies with uh, more than 5000 patients show that vitamin d has a protective effect against respiratory tract infection and there is evidence based complementary and alternative medicine 2018 is saying that 400 iu per day of vitamin d supplementation is needed for supplementing for prevention of respiratory tract infection again the same thing with zinc antibody defense so this is antibody defense this is physical barrier defense and this is cellular defense so we have taken care of the three aspects of immunity where even in this trial of more than 15 around 1500 patients has shown that zinc reduces incidence of common cold uh, and prescription of antibiotics are reduced zinc shortens the duration of colds by approximately 33% and zinc supplementation leads to further faster decrease in symptoms associated with upper respiratory tract infection now some points about who advice for adults during covid 19 outbreak and i'm sure your patients are asking you all about this so the uh, they are saying that eat fresh and unprocessed foods every day and a well rounded diets of vegetables legumes whole grains so on and so forth for snack choose raw vegetables and fruits rather than choosing snacks which are like namkeens and mithais do not overcook foods this is something that patients are worried about so nutritional advice for adults during covid break is 
your covid outbreak is consume plenty of fruits and vegetables hydrate yourself well with coming in of october heat i think hydration is very very important reduce salt and sugar intake to as minimum as you can okay eat unsaturated fats coming from nuts oils uh, soy etc and do not eat saturated fats which is coming from meat or foods like ghee and also eat at home do not eat outside food as much as possible and eat well balanced diet should i be concerned about food safety and covid 19 transmission now this is something that we talk to our patients all the time but i thought it's a time that it's told to everybody it is very unlikely that one can contract covid from food covid 19 is a respiratory illness it is not known to be transmitted by exposure to food or food packaging agent but please continue to follow general food safety advice of washing hands thoroughly cleaning surfaces and uh, separating raw uh, meat and fish from cooked foods while preparing foods now ayush guidelines are given by ministry of health uh, ayush ministry of ayush by uh, in our country where they are talking about very very specific foods like tulsi uh, gaduchi ginger and turmeric and these are functional foods in as per not modern medical nutrition therapy guideline so we are talking about ginger because ginger again is known to suppress prostaglandin synthesis through inhibition of cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 it suppresses leukotriene biosynthesis by inhibiting five lipogenase activity and therefore ginger should be used there is also a lot of role for garlic in being antimicrobial and therefore garlic is also should be used as food especially during these times so is tulsi which is very medicinal and it um, uh, it modulates humoral and cell mediated immunity and these immunity effect might be due to gaba energetic pathways curcumin or haldi the bioactive principle of haldi is curcumin and we know curcumin is known for its anti inflammatory effect um, and mark uh, and um, ad administration of curcumin reduces the inflammatory markers such as interleukin 1 beta interleukin 6 etc so curcumin and respiratory diseases when supplemented together with lactoferrin which is present in milk the children uh, with recurrent respiratory infection it produces beneficial effect since significant modulation of immune response takes place and this is what happens when you consume doodh haldi or um, turmeric latte as it is called so in conclusion immune system undergoes many changes over life course developing and maturing during childhood and potentially achieving peak function in adulthood and gradually declining in people of older age distinct immune features are present during each life stage and specifically factors dif uh, differential effect on immune function which result in different uh, difference in type prevalence and severity of infection with age a common factor throughout life is need of adequate supplementation of micronutrients which plays a key role in supporting immune function remember decreased amount of micronutrition is also called as silent malnutrition multiple micronutrient deficiencies are common throughout the world with likelihood of increasing in age tailored supplementation based on specific needs of each age group may help to provide an adequate basis of optimal immune function the available clinical data suggests that micronutrient supplementation can reduce the risk and severity of infection and help support faster recovery thank you so much for a patient hearing thank you ma'am thank you for this very nice and informative lecture ma'am and i'm sure our audience have really enjoyed all this information ma'am uh, ma'am if you are uh, okay uh, ma'am can we start uh, there are actually few questions coming up uh, on the chat do. box ma'am please do. Uh, okay ma'am so ma'am first question because i guess uh, this is one of the commonest question how much of nuts how much of almonds and how much of cashews are okay uh, so american heart association says that for prevention of heart disease a palm full something that will fit in woman's palm and i have tried fitting them in my palm and they come to 21 nuts a day so you should have about 20 to 25 nuts a day which should be a good mixture of all tree nuts so it can be almonds it can be walnuts it can be various kinds of nuts 
as much as they fit in the palm of your hand very important when you start eating nuts please reduce available fat consumption means don't eat fatty foods just eat plain raw nuts don't soak them don't roast them don't fry them just buy them and eat them thank you ma'am uh, now ma'am one more question like uh, uh, like you have discussed about role of vitamin c in covid 19 uh but uh, i mean everyone is asking why 500 mg man so is there any specific role of 500 so, mg no so rda is very low but it has been seen that if you supplement beyond rda see rda are requirements only for healthy population but when you are in a pandemic time when your requirements are more it is better to supplement at a higher level toxicity as is at 2000 mg so you are way below toxicity but you are supplementing enough also you do not know how much of it is actually going to be absorbed in your system because there are food nutrient interactions also right so everything can, may be or may not be absorbed and hence supplementing it to a sub, more than rda level is very important especially when you are trying to fight a infection if you are just looking for maintenance of good health Uh, RDA is good enough, but beyond RDA is very necessary. You know, right now we are in a do or die situation, so we need something more. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, and ma'am, for how long? I mean, what should be the duration of, uh, like, for example, vitamin C five hundred mg? So See, how long it should be? With vitamin C, is it's a water soluble vitamin, so there is very less scope of storage of this nutrient in our system, and hence you need to supplement it as long. Now the winters are coming. so there are no winters in for example mumbai and south india so we are always in summer but in north india when winter set in the rate of respiratory infections goes up so it is very important at this point that supplementation continues because virus is a virus right there are other viruses also which will be active that time and it is far better that we supplement vitamin uh, uh, c for a longer period of time thank you I mean, uh, with the winters, actually, uh, one more uh, important nutrient, vitamin D, definitely. I mean, because the deficiency actually starts. I mean, more uh, prevalent in winters. So, uh, do you feel? I mean, vitamin D should also be taken uh, for the long time. Yes. No. Vitamin D, you can monitor serum levels, and as long as you are having about fifty uh, in your uh, serum levels, you are good enough. But remember, in, see, these all papers come from West, and in West, you know. that sun rises very late and sets very early in winter so the time when there is sun and also <coughs> it is very very cold so they are covered with clothes many many layers that definitely does not happen below madhya pradesh in india so we are always in the same season like but in india the bigger problem is a there is a lot of pollution so we do not know how much of uv rays are actually reaching down to create vitamin d second thing is in india we are very well clothed so wearing less clothes is not socially acceptable and therefore the exposed area to sun is very minimal and even if you decide to expose that area to sun we are all surrounded by buildings so sun is not reaching us and the third reason which is the melanin of our skin actually acts as a sunscreen and does not let vitamin d be produced in our skin thanks ma'am so mam uh, like for the covid 19 okay so covid 19 during the covid 19 definitely vitamin c has a role vitamin d has a role zinc also has a role but mam what about post covid so the patient who have recovered shall uh, should they also continue taking vitamin c to zinc? prevent reinfections okay. and to prevent reinfections not from covid because that period you will have immunity but there are other thousands of things going around right so we are yes. not living we are not only fighting with covid we are fighting with there are other viruses also doing rounds right now so to prevent reinfection because during convalescence you are just recovering you are your immune system have fought a very big battle and they are tired soldiers tabhi dusra dushman aa gaya to bhi to prepared chahiye so you need to have good immune because when you keep having micronutrients in a good amount remember the basics of your body dna replication cell multiplication you know basic um, um, uh, energy cycles like the krebs cycle glycolysis fatty acid cycle they function very well and a well functioning system is able to fight a, in case there is a recurrence thanks ma'am thank you ma'am 
so ma'am usually there is one more question uh, doctors actually ask uh, is that ki is that diet i mean we also follow that from the diet you actually can get whatever uh, nutrients you want so why we need to take supplementation no that's the problem the first thing is that we eat healthy is a very questionable entity okay so we all feel that we eat healthy but what is actually a healthy diet so if you look at the who guideline healthy diet constitutes of eating 7 to 8 servings of vegetable which actually comes to 200 g per person tell me in india pav kilo sabzi laate char log khana khate actually correct so correct. people are not eating indians are essentially vegetarian our protein demands are 1 g per kg body weight most of the indians most eat 0.5 g per kg body weight that is the amount of protein we give to a person with chronic renal failure without dialysis okay so even that person can handle that much protein and you are you are expecting people to fight a infection with that protein intake right so that is not possible also remember lot of times especially in india we cook a food a lot so ek bar khana banta hai usko 25 bar garam kiya jata hai ab ye kha raha hai to garam karo wo so there is a lot of loss of micronutrients in that process and we, as indians we eat very little raw food you know we, our food is primarily cooked salad in india is not a food fruit in india is not a food nobody is eating salad for lunch like in west so what happens is our those these micronutrients though they are present in food you will realize that they are destroyed by the time they come on our plate and hence if you have a very well rounded diet where you are eating 200 grams of vegetables and you are eating fruits and you are eating whole grains you are not eating anything refined it's fine but this kind of people are very far and few it is like saying mujhe har paper mein 100 on 100 mil raha hai aise bahut kam log hote hai na duniya mein bakiyon ko to 50 60 70 milte hai so most so far i at 60% we are still deficient 40% but 80% of people young generation who is eating out of packets is not even meeting 5 to 10% of their requirement thank you ma'am uh Okay, ma'am. I guess uh, uh, that was the last question. I guess, ma'am. I'm just checking, ma'am. Is there yes, anything? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, there is one more question. So, is it possible that every individual is given sixty thousand international unit uh, for vitamin D as a preventive measure, or daily vitamin D supplementation is enough? Or so whichever way, I do not think there is too much difference. There are people who are happy taking every day. There are people who say, "Roj roj ka lafra mat rakho." हफ्ते में एक बार ठीक है जब हम घर पे होते बिकॉज वी आर ऑल वर्किंग फ्रॉम होम सो वी आर वर्किंग ऑल द टाइम राइट सो इट कम्प्लीटली डिपेंड्स इफ यू वांट टू डू वीक सिक्सटी थाउजेंड आई थिंक कम्प्लायंस इज वॉट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं तो यू नो दो दिन लेते दस दिन नहीं लेते दैट हैज नो मीनिंग बिकॉज आई एम सेंग बिकॉज विटामिन डी इज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन फूड सो इफ यू आर लुकिंग आउट ऑल्सो फॉर डाइट रिसोर्स इफ यू आर बाइंग एक्सपेंसिव फूड लाइक यू आर बाइंग फोर्टिफाइड मिल्क remember bioavailability is very poor and fortification is not to that level it's mildly fortified and fortification means you can't process it afterwards how many of us actually open cans and drink milk from it no we warm it we process it uski kabhi kheer banti hai kabhi garam karke bone vita dala jata hai kuch na kuch to hota hai na chai banti hai it's all destroyed very well point ma'am and uh, i guess ma'am that was it uh, from the questions point of view ma'am and thank you ma'am ma'am uh, so nicely taking this session and so nicely answering all the questions i mean after taking so much marathon session and answering all the question with a smile ma'am thank you thank, thank you thank you so much thank you ma'am